저기 다음은 저기 마지막 세션이 되겠는데요. 어, 이거 굉장히 중요한 세션인 것 같습니다. 앞으로 스마트 TV가 어쨌든 이 특허 패턴트 문제로 어쨌든 이것도 아, 저기 스마트폰에서 그 애플하고 삼성하고 이 특허 관련해 갖고 많은 이슈가 있었는데 어쨌든 스마트 TV도 앞으로 이런 특허 관련해 가지고 다양한 이슈들이 생길 수 있습니다. 그 저도 많이 들어본 회사인데 스테포 앤 존슨 LLP 여기 뭐 저희들 그때 애플하고 삼성이라든지 그 다음에 기아차 여기 특허 문제 관련해 가지고 소송도 맡았던 회사고요. 아마 굉장히 좀 좋은 내용인 것 같습니다. I would like to introduce the Mr. Tom p e s t n a k for in the s t e p a n i o n Johnson LLP. Thank you for your coming. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Tom Pasternak. I'm a patent litigator uh, from Chicago, Illinois. And um, about a week ago, one of my partners asked me if I could come to Korea and talk about the smart TV patent wars. And I said, what smart TV patent wars? He said, I don't know either, but that's the topic you have to talk about. So I decided to look into it. and um, see, what I could, see what I conclude about whether there have been smart TV patent wars, um, whether there, there, there are some coming, uh, and I'm going to show you what I found, and I'm going to make a prediction at the end. Everyone knows about the smartphone patent wars, right? It's on the front page of every newspaper, uh, and certainly here in Korea with the Samsung app war. Everyone knows about that one. Smart TV patent wars, uh, I, I haven't heard of any, but as I looked into it, what, I'm gonna, what, what I found and what I'm going to show you some examples of are there have been some smart TV patent wars, and I think there's more coming. So that, that's generally what we're going to talk about, and I'm going I'm to kind of go back and forth between some of the big litigations that have gone on and also some of the intellectual property that is is out there and and is coming i've obviously because i'm a u.s patent lawyer looked at u.s patents and u.s cases but generally what what goes on in the u.s is mirrored or or or, or the reverse what goes on in the rest of the world is mirrored in the u.s in terms of what intellectual property companies are getting and what battles are being fought for example the smart Smartphone patent wars, one of the biggest battles was between Samsung and Apple in the United States recently, but that battle has gone on and is going on around the rest of the world. So if we talk about uh, my sort of survey here, based on U.S. intellectual property, I think it's a fair premise to say that that will be what's going to happen in the rest of the world. And, and why does it matter? Well, I mean, we've seen a lot of statistics. I, I have some of my own here. The bottom line is that smart, smart TV sales are, are growing and they're going to be huge. And there's sort of a law of patent economics. And that law says that if there's a lot of money out there, there may be U.S. patent litigation. Um, sales may be reach 153 million units in the U.S. by 2016. One of the first companies I came across where there actually has been, and, it, and, and it's currently going on, is in a company called Rovi. It's an American company, uh, and it provides various kinds of technology uh, for use in smart television. Rovi has basically sued the industry, uh, both in the International Trade Commission and in the U.S. District Courts. Uh, some of the, you can see some of the companies that have been sued you know, all of the big players in the smart TV universe have been sued by Rovi, either in the ITC or in the district courts. So 
here's one example. There has been at least one, one smart television patent war started by Roe v. and it's still going. What, what is that war about? It's about televisions with interactive pro program guides, video demand, parental control features, and we're going to see that those sorts of things are at issue in a lot of, a lot of the, the sort of wars I'll be telling you about, and those sorts of things are at issue in the patents that are coming that may lead to the future battles. Um, I, I typically talk more to patent lawyers than I do to, to non-patent lawyers, and, and, I, and I don't have a good sense of uh, sort of people's familiar, familiarity with patents. Um, I won't assume there's any, but I, at the same time, I don't want to insult anyone. But I have a few examples of some of the patents that are at issue in, in these things, just to show you kind of what they look like, what some of the things that are going on are. I'm not going to dive into um, any detail at all about what the claims of the patents are or you know, what, what the accusations of infringement are. These are just meant to be sort of illustrations of some of the patents and some of the issues. Um, th this is one of the patents that Roby has been asserting, and it, as you can see, it has to do with parental control of television viewing. <clears throat> and again, in a patent, what you look at in a patent is the claims at the end, and a claim is a list of things that one has to do to infringe, and that, 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 that's really what a patent is about. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about system claims and method claims. What a system claim is, is a bunch of parts connected together, and what a, what a method claim is a, a bunch of steps. So you can get a patent either on a system or on a method, and both types of patents are at issue in Roe v. Here you can see in the 523 patent a system. There's method claims at issue in Roe v. and there's method and system claims at issue in some of the other cases I'll talk a little bit about. But this is an example of a system claim that Roe v. has asserted against all of those people, all of those companies I've listed, and to infringe this patent, you, your system has to have all of those all of those pieces. Another patent that Roe v. has asserted has to do with an interactive television program guide. Um, and for people who haven't seen a patent before, this is, a, this is the front page of a patent. That's what all patents look like. Has various descriptions of what's going on in the patent. And this is one of the claims from one, another of the Roe v. patents and it claims an interactive television video on demand, demand program guide system with all of these various parts. So for someone to be found guilty of infringement of this patent, all of these things have to be present. You also see something in this claim um, that you'll often see in patent claims, and that's when you say means for displaying. All that really means is just a shorthand way for describing another part of a system. It's, it's, a, it's a patent lawyer's trick to describe a part. Another Roe v. patent has a system and a method. I wanted to, to show you what, what a method claim looks like uh, in the Roe v. patent war. And here we have a method claim. As you can see, it claims a method for using an electronic, electronic program guide. So to infringe this claim, someone would have to carry out the steps, the providing step, the receiving step, and the accessing step. That's the difference between a method claim and a system claim. So there, that, that's a little bit about Roby. That's a, that's a big smart TV patent war that has gone on, is still going on, and until I looked into this, I didn't know anything about it. And that's probably because I didn't work on it or wasn't exposed to it. It may be one that you, you guys do know about because of the industry you're in, um, but it certainly doesn't get the kind of front page news that the smartphone patent wars have been getting. Now I'm going to flip over to not a, a, a current patent war, but I also poked around, and again, I think what, what I'm showing you is probably just the tip of the iceberg um, as to what's, what's going on out there. But I came across some press um, about Apple. 
and then in August they, they had 29 patents published having to do with smart television. So uh, to me that's a pretty good sign that, our, that Apple is serious about smart TV. There's rumors that they're going to be coming out with an actual device in addition to their smart TV or their Apple TV service. And I, I took a look at one of the patents that issued and um, it shows again the kind of things people are getting intellectual property on. It ha ways to display on the screen. We talked this morning a little bit about the importance of the user interface. Well, Apple has gone, ab gone about, I didn't look at all 29 of their patents, so I'm sure they're, they're, they're going for a lot of different things. But one of the things they're getting patents are on, are, are on various ways to, uh, uh, to set up the user interface on, on the Apple TV to make it simpler for the user. This is a description of what's in one of the patents, systems and methods for generating a menu in a video environment for a video that can be displayed. That's, that's sort of patent lawyer description and that's what they say. Um, and then what I, what I pulled out of this Apple patent is some of the embodiments, some of the samples of the kinds of things that they're gonna try to get patent coverage on. This one shows a, an example of a screen, and, and you can see sort of a talk show uh, at the bottom with various icons to do various things uh, uh, as far as recording and so forth on that show. Here's another picture out of their patent, and you can see that, again, it's some sort of a, a pull-down menu, uh, user interface, highlighting, highlighting things, selecting things, these things are very, it struck me as I was watching uh, my friend from Italy displaying some of his user interfaces that they look a lot like this. So, so what does that mean to a patent lawyer? It means that you know, there, there may be problems for uh, people in Italy if Apple is getting patents on this sort of thing in Italy. And knowing Apple, they probably are. So you know, the, the, the signs are all out there by looking at this, comparing it to that that there, is, there are patent wars coming from Apple. Okay, now I'll flip back to another patent war. This one I, I actually had heard of, uh, TiVo. Uh, it, TiVo is the famous, at least in the United States, the famous system where you can um, record one program while you're watching another. Uh, and they were very smart about it. They got patents fairly early on that technology. and uh, of course, being smart people, they sued the universe, and they've they've won very big, and and they're not done yet. From everything I can read, um, they settled with Verizon for 250 million. They settled with Equistar for 500 million. Those patents are strong. They've been put into reexamination three times. Reexamination is a process where you can go back to the United States Patent Office and ask them to take another look. Say, hey, you, we think you got this one wrong. We found some more prior art, take a look. Well, people have tried, and, and that's a typical defense in a patent suit to try to uh, get the patent knocked out uh, and have them redo it. Uh, these, these have survived three times in re-exam. These are some of the patents that I found in some of the articles about um, TiVo. I think the big one is, this, it's called a multimedia time warping system and that's the system for what we know TiVo to do, where you can watch a program and record another. The invention allows the user to store, store a television broadcast program while simultaneously watching or reviewing another program. And that patent, as I said, was re-examined with no changes made. When that happens, it means trouble for the people who are infringing. And then and the, and here's, a, here's another example of one of the TiVo patents. This is a method patent. Sometimes they're called process patents. This is a very, very long, detailed process. Probably difficult to find infringement. If you, if you read all of those various steps that someone would have to carry out to infringe. But a, but a claim like that would be hard to invalidate because it's so very specific. Um, back, back to another war to come, perhaps. Uh, I looked at Google. I didn't find much. 
Um, but what I found about Google on a patent they've applied for is using an Android phone as a control uh, for a smart TV, and particularly using voice commands. And you see, you see a picture from the, from the patent application of a person talking to his phone, uh, asking a question to the, to the television, where, when is Seinfeld on, and the television says. Um, the notions of voice actuation are, are in, in what I looked at, widespread in smart TV. So now we see that Google is getting patents on this. So what does that mean to me? It means something's going to happen. And then the last example I found of an actual patent war, and I think this is the third, the third one I found, and I'm sure there's probably more, um, is by, was by a company called Active Video Networks, uh, a company that makes apps for uh, smart TV apps. And they sued Verizon, who seems to be a, a, a prime target in these suits, um, on patents related to video on demand TV. Uh, and Verizon settled uh, with Active Video Networks. They have uh, a boatload of patents on various aspects of smart TV, uh, and, it, and it's pretty clear to me in what I've seen that Active Video Networks is going to be out there and active in, in asserting its patents. Here's a picture from one of the Active Video Networks patents that shows a carousel uh, user interface. And here's one of the claims from one of the Active Video Networks, again, reciting various steps that someone would have to carry out to infringe that claim. So um, that was what I found. I, th I think with digging, I could find a lot more. And like I said, I think th th this is the survey of the US, which I'm sure is, is similar to what's going on in the rest of the world as far as you know, what some of these big players are doing in getting intellectual property in the smart TV realm. Um, we all know the names of these companies. We know the wars they've already fought. Um, we've seen projections in various countries of the, of the marketplace. So if I, if I had to make a prediction, and I will, and, and, and if I'm right or wrong, no one's going to ever call me and tell me I am, but I, I think their big patent wars are coming in this space. All of the evidence points that way. Um, and the features that I think will, will be at issue in these wars, I've listed, you know, the, the things that you see again and again and again, both in the patents that are being obtained, in the patents that have been enforced, uh, and, and, and as I listen to the discussions of features that are important to the consumer, voice activation, the programming guides comes up again and again and again, the time shifting, you know, the hardware obviously, the head ends, the displays, I think the cloud aspect, uh, I, I mean, I, I know the cloud aspect, is going to be a big part of this. I do work for Amazon, and they're getting sued on their cloud, their cloud things. So all of that uh, makes me think that it's just the beginning of the next of the next big patent war. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about any of this, or if anyone wants to talk about any of it afterward. Appreciate the time. 혹시 질문 있으신 분? Hi, um, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very informative. Um, <clears throat> one question I had was, um, obviously the economy is not doing well, and smart TV, um, uh, I'm assuming that many sort of small and medium-sized enterprises are having difficulties. Have you seen any activity by uh, non-practicing entities in acquiring patents that are related to smart TV technology? That's a good question. Um, and for, the, for those who don't know, a non-practicing entity is, is sort of the plague of the corporate world. It's a company that acquires patents um, uh, purely as a business and sues big companies. I looked for that. I, I did not find any.
but I guarantee you that they are. I guarantee it. I mean, some of this stuff is, is well hidden until it pops up. Anyone else? Okay, Mike. Seems like uh, some of the patents uh, have a limited shelf life because they're older, especially the ones like you mentioned on TiVo. Is this the, is this the case that what, what you're finding that you know these things will expire and then they'll be? That that's that's a very good point. Uh, I didn't look hard at that, um, but my sense is that in, in the ones where they've already been suing people for you know five seven years, they probably are getting at the end of the life. These other ones are just issuing, so it's on to the next stage, but that's a good point. Pat, obviously, patents do have a limited life, and some of these ones are getting on, on in their age. Thank you for your uh, presentation. Mr. Mr. Pestra. Okay.